A quick summary. I know, I've been talking a lot on this code because I know this eventually is gonna get clumsy. So that's why I'm gonna repeat it one more time. So first and foremost, init get called. So your global execution context reside here, then an executional context of the function init comes up. And on top of that, this say first name loads up. As soon as the first name actually completes the execution, poof, it's gone. And then finally in it, poof, it's gone. So now let's go ahead and watch this very closely. I'm gonna copy all of this code. I'm gonna move on to closure and I'm gonna paste it up there. So far, no difference, okay. Now what happens, and this is very surprising to a lot of you, is I don't actually run this one directly. When I don't run this directly, that means I have a reference of that method, but I'm not executing it right straightforwardly. And what happens if I just return this one? Okay, so that is very, very interesting. Now, whenever you run this method, it creates this first name, and then there is this function, but it doesn't execute that function immediately. Rather, it pass a reference on it, and you can execute it wherever you like or whenever you like. For example, if I just go ahead and say var, let's call it as value, I am no, this is not really great. Uh, variable name, but I'm running out of it, honestly. So when I say this, now can you imagine what is happening? As soon as the init runs, init doesn't really just execute and just poof goes, goes away, but rather it just gives me a reference of this one. Now there is an ambiguity here. Now init mounts up and on top of that, this say first name mounts up. But since the first name, actually we get the reference of it, it just not completely is gone. That's why the init cannot actually poof and goes away. Now this is a classical statement where actually if I introduce pointers to you and try to explain you that we still got a reference of it and that's why memory cannot free it up. It would be much more easier to understand, but uh, that's not would be 100% correct. But for understanding perspective, it's absolutely amazing. Just imagine you got a reference and you got to do something from this method. That's why total removal of init from the memory is not possible and total removal of this first name is also not possible. Okay, so you might be asking, so how can I actually run anything? Because right now nothing is running actually. And if I open up the console, I know there's too much going on in the console. Let's clean that up. And I'm gonna simply say node, I'm inside 05, yep, 05. Zero five. And this is 06, yep, 05 again, closure, there we go. So if I run this, there is nothing right now. Because yes, 100%, you are right that init executed, but init has nothing, nothing to print right now. If it would have something to print, like if I just go ahead and say log, and it can say, I am init, and I can wrap that up definitely inside the parenthesis, or not parenthesis, the quotes. There we go. Now if I run this one, now surely init is executing, but its state of executional content is not going away totally because something is here, which is not, which hasn't yet served its purpose. So what you can do in that situation, you can just go ahead, since this value is technically now say first name, we are calling it value, but inside in the memory, it is known as say first name. You can go ahead and execute this. Yep, this is your closure. Now let's go ahead and save this. And if I run that again, it says I am Hitesh, but it also prints you the first name. And since, since I told you that in it, poof, it's not gone away because it has some more purpose to serve. Its reference is not deleted. And that is why you get an access to this first name. If this in it would be gone and only this guy would be hanging around, then it wouldn't have an access of these things. And that's why I told you it can quickly become absolutely messy. I'm gonna show you some examples where these things can be more uh, kind of manipulated. Now let me give you a bit more example, classic editor example, which is always given up. But if you understand this part of it, it's gonna be much more easier for you. So I'm gonna comment all of this. I'm gonna move up here. And now let me give you another example. You're gonna see this a whole lot of time. Now let's just say similar to this, same function in it. We're gonna simply say function and let's call it as uh, do addition do addition. Okay, so what it does, whenever you do an addition, you pass on a value x to it. And simply, you can do whatever the addition you want to do. But we don't do the addition directly. Rather, we're going to go ahead and simply say return. I want to return another function. 
which takes another parameter y. And then we are going to go ahead and call return x plus y. Okay, now this is already very tricky code. Now, whenever you are going to call this uh, method, it's not going to directly add the things. It rather will give you a reference of the function and then you can add it. So how to use this one? It's actually a little bit tricky and you're going to see this code quite a lot. For example, I just say that I want to do add function. So I'm going to simply say uh, something like add five. This can be a variable name. And then you can simply go ahead and say do addition. But do addition takes a parameter. So x needs to be given. Let's just say I give five. So will I get a result directly here? No, not at all. Because what this add five is holding is the execution of do addition. When the execution of do addition happens, it doesn't do anything. It returns you a reference of this guy. So next time, or in order to do the addition, this add five needs to be working just exactly what we did here, value and parenthesis. So what I can do is I can run this add five and using these parentheses. Now, but since in this case, an X value is also required, I'm going to go ahead and say, I'm going to add five to you now. Now these are just literal values. It can be any values. So don't really bother too much about that. Okay. But right now we're just returning these values. So it would be really good if I just do a console.log here. So I'm going to simply say log, come on log there we go and if i just move this guy cut this out and move it up here and there we go now let's go ahead and try to run this one again and let's see what happens and there we go we see nine because first time the value in the do addition four is being passed on but four alone cannot do anything because what add five is holding up is a reference so these are very common scenario that you're going to see that where a bunch of methods and all these things are happening and what it also brings us is uh, sometimes a typical case scenario happens uh, where you can have a back to back uh, these things. So let me show you one more thing here. Very interesting one. OK, so this next thing is going to be a bit confusing for you. Uh, but let me show you that because it's important that you get an idea of it. Now, what is our method name? It is do addition. So it looks like a regular method. So do I always need to hold a reference of it? No, you don't need to always hold a reference of it and then run it in the next line. What you can do, which is a bit surprising to many of you, I can go ahead and call do addition, just like this. It requires you to pass on a value. Okay, let's go ahead and pass on four. Or four is already given. Let's give five. Any value is going to work. And just after that, you can pass on another value here and can give another one here. And then you can just go ahead and print this out. Right now, this is going to just return the value. So it's important that we cut this out and we actually go ahead and do a log of it. And there we go. Now, what do you think is going to happen? And I'm pretty sure you have never seen a parenthesis this crazy. We run it up here and just after that, we run it up here. When I run this one, notice we got 10 here. The above 5 and 4 is actually 9. So that's just ignore that part. And we got 10 here as well. Now, this is very, very strange to a lot of people that how we are able to do this. This is all possible because of the closure and also, also because of how memory is working in JavaScript. Remember, the do addition never goes off from the memory because still one reference is alive of it. As soon as one reference, even a single reference of function is allowed, it doesn't poof goes away. And that is why the internal function still is alive. Now, let me show you one more thing. I have to look up a little bit on the Google, but I just wanted to show you. It's nothing related to code, but just wanted to give you a brief idea of it. So let me search for it. Found it. You don't need to worry too much about it, but yes, I found it. So notice uh, Redux, which is another JavaScript state management library. Yes, it's there in React, Angular, and probably you'll be using it later on. No, we are not going to be learning it as of now. But notice here there is a design decision here. Usually people don't go that much off in the documentation. It's 100% OK. I like to dig uh, deep into that. Notice here, it, there is a statement here while designing the Redux. It's considered as a little bit tough, but it's actually one of the finest way of managing the state of big application. Notice there is a straight article here. Why does uh, apply middleware uses a closure for dispatch? And this closure, whatever we have learned here, is actually implemented in the design decision of the Redux as well. So again, a whole lot of libraries and framework which are really like a 
the go-to way of doing a lot of things in React and Angular uses these things. Behind the scene, they are just closure. So again, they have a whole lot of uh, in-detail, in-depth analysis about it and a whole lot of discussion, uh, which a lot of geeky people likes to have it just like me. But again, you don't need to go too much of depth, but just to give you a fact that these two parentheses syntax is pretty common in Redux. And this is all coming up because of the closure involvement and you're gonna see them a lot. It's not like I'm, I'm talking all about this for fancy stuff. These are actually being used almost every place. Okay, quite a lot of information in just video. So hit that subscribe and let's catch up in the next one.